I'm blessed this morning to be part of uh, this great family, Seventh-day Adventist Church, New Life. I have uh, never before had a privilege of this kind to stand here. As it were, for me, I hope it is for you to have that great privilege to be seated where you are seated today because you have never had an opportunity to sit and you've never even remembered that you sat there or when you sat there last. So it's a dear privilege for each one of us to find time and opportunity to come before the Lord, seated where you are specifically stationed and where the Lord allowed you to sit and um, uh, do fellowship at his feet. Um, regards from the leadership of the union, they know that I'm here, and my leader, who happens to be a church member over here, I'm gratified, elder, normally you keep on saying, but today it is a reality that I can see you fellowshipping when you have no itinerary somewhere. Praise be to God, because you have kept your word that this is your church. I don't know what they did to you, but they must have uh, uh, served you well. And uh, most of us, when we are served well, we tend to remember to come back and stay. Uh, we want to thank God for you, my leader, for uh, fellowshipping with us today. Um, the children's story, the song for, from the little ones, we want to praise God for the young people of this church. They are the ones who take over from us. And it feels such a delight when we see them participate. And uh, I want to thank God for these young people, uh, young children. We are praying for you that you will take our space when we uh, quit from the stage of ministry in any form, as a deaconess, as an elder, as a pastor, that is a privilege. Um, I am almost two years old in the city. And uh, as I said, I've not been around, but I want to thank God that I'm around today. It's the honor and glory of his name. I happened to stumble upon uh, one fellow I know, Masinganga. I saw her passing. She did see me, but I saw her. She still maintains her stature. And uh, what, what is she? I want her to greet you on my behalf. She was my college mate. She could be having some business somewhere, Masi. I saw you. You are not do different from how I used to see you. I'm told you are a church member here. She could be out. Marcy. What is she? Out. Wherever you are, I want to say greetings on your behalf. Happy Sabbath, members. Happy Sabbath. Those are those old days when we were young. And we could fellowship together at college. And you guys, you remember, if you happen to be in college, how delightful moments when you are young and doing fellowship and um, socializing, not for bad, but for good. She was, a, she was a good one. Participant, I don't know why she does it even today. When she speaks, she speaks well, not like myself. Uh, she, that fluent language uh, that can be audible by even the white men who have just come today to fellowship with us. We praise God for, we praise God for, for, for his church and the diverse uh, gifts he has given us. I want to usher you to a moment of prayer before I do this item and allow me to do it. You do it with me. Hymn number, uh, hymn number 487. I come to the garden alone. Yes, I thought of it as I was seated and uh, I had not prepared my wife and my kids to do this number because they just came from down 
that village where uh, we enjoy our residence to visit with me. And so I'm doing it myself. Just uh, uh, accompany with me, uh, accompany me whenever you feel like. I come to the garden alone. I want you to challenge yourself that you are here alone. Challenge your being here that the Lord may speak to you. That the Lord may open the avenues of your understanding. That you may hear what he says as a word of encouragement uh, today. I come to the garden alone. While the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the sun of God is closer, and he walks with me and he talks with me and tells me sound of his voice is so sweet the part has his singing and the melody that he gave to me with him my heart is and our Heavenly Father, our Creator, Sustainer, and uh, our ultimate Redeemer through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pause at your presence, tarry for a moment that you may teach us how to walk with you and to fellowship in communion with you. Dear Lord, we want to seek for your forgiveness. We want to pray that you may help us to find 
the missing link in our lives with you and connect back to your altar of fellowship. We've wandered far away. We need you to touch us and restore us souls that are lamenting and languishing in sin. But Heavenly Father, we can see your face even as you encourage us one more time today to walk with you and feel the solace and the comfort when we are with you. We trust and believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, New Life members, we have a mission for us as a church. And this mission has been given a proper direction by this church. And uh, we have been through several themes year in, year out, with a focus to encourage and restore our souls to fellowship with God. Because it is at such a fellowship that when you cease to be, you can be counted in that number. It is by genuine communion with our God that you can have this great privilege of being a partaker of that heavenly realms, realms of peace and rest from this turmoil of this world and the suffering and the stress. So the church has endeavored constantly to develop themes that are appropriate and strategically designed to guide his people, the church, whom we have, he has called out of the world to be positioned with an intention and purpose true to propagate the good news to the world. The three angels' message was a theme that was just concluded last year. I will go with the three angels' message. And the other year, as it were, it was a theme, I remember, it was um, about the gospel. And we discovered that this is the message that the church has been guided to carry out the world in its entirety with no distinction and without, without favor of anyone. And this year we have a theme that is to find access to our hearts as we grow in his grace to know who has called us and the one who has assigned us a responsibility to carry out. Before you know who has given you the assignment, and who has called you before even he gave you the assignment, and these assignments are different. They differ from one person to another depending on the gift he has assigned to you specifically. And so you need not to wonder about whether somebody has a gift different from you. You only need to be, you only need to be content and rest at peace, satisfied that the Lord has something for you and you must do something because you are not here and... Um, just to pass time and uh, maybe to, 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 to fellowship with others without being involved. So this year's theme goes that Jesus is coming soon. Get involved. And it's refocusing on the urgency of the mission. If you hear out there that your beloved mother was coming to Nai, you call it the Nai? I, had, I saw my daughter communicating home that I'm in Nai. So I got it from there. So I, maybe it could not be yours. It could be Ira Yaushago. <laughs> so it's accepted. When your mother is coming over from, from the village, 
each one of you belongs to some specific village. So don't think that you don't belong to a village where you came from. You were not born here. This place, it was a grazing ground for the Masai. So don't forget that. <laughs> I want to command you in the name of Jesus. Remember where you did what? Yes, the village. And be proud of the village. Praise God. <laughs> So, when she was communicating, I got it from there, that you are in Nai, uh, I'm in Nai, uh, and I'll be coming back. Have you finished your assignment? That's what I read in uh, WhatsApp that she was communicating to her friends. So. so, when your mother is coming from the village to Nai, I don't know how you call it, you are, you are, you are, you are swag, your language, isn't it? So, uh, uh, really? huh? Kanairo. Oh, that's another one. <laughs> Take it up. <laughs> My daughter, take it up. Canairo. So, you need to change with the times, okay? Not naive, but Canairo. So, when your mother has promised that she's coming to Canairo, and you, you are over here with all the extravagant food and the chapo, soft and hard one, and with all the supermarket stuff that you bring, it's yours for the asking because you have all the resources to do it. And so, uh, you need to do some preparation, isn't it? You, ne you need to do some preparation. Thorough preparations, your mother. You know, some people, some people out there make it a, a, a prerequisite that I will not go to church before my mother arrives. If she's at my Mayo, it, maybe it's from Kisi and from the western side of the, of the country. And I'm a Sema, Nimefika, my ma. Nasem, is Minajua Niwapi. You, 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 she's arriving and uh, you have been preparing food even at the expense of uh, church preparation because my, my day was, your mother was coming. And uh, sometimes some of the ladies miss church because my, my, my is coming, isn't it? A special guest is coming. Your sister can be a special guest depending on how you relate it. If they are coming, you will determine to do preparation at the expense of anything, even church. Do you? Yeah. Some special guest is coming, and so no fellowship, no church. That's how much you know. God forbid you should know different, differently. Church, guest is coming or not, it's a time to do fellowship and receive revival that was meant for that day come and fellowship at church. So, what, what was I communicating? A guest who was coming. And you knew very well he, was, he or she was coming. You need to do some thorough preparations. Prepare yourself in terms of meals. And especially here, do the necessary that will make you um, 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 make a difference from the village. Okay. So, so, if she goes back, or if he goes back, this your guest, he or she would have a memorable moment that he came to Kanairo. And the Kanairo is that different with all the accompaniment of uh, experience, meals, going to fellowship somewhere. That is what Jesus has said to us, that he is coming soon. And uh, do you dare take it for granted simply because you are not going to be serious with your, your commitment. So our call for this year's theme is Jesus is coming. Our guests, who is coming to do um, an extraordinary business of eradicating all the troubles of this world and the challenges that we face here below and give us a reward of that eternity where we shall be in peace and harmony. So a wonderful lady stood here and said some prayer to my heart. And when I was inquiring from her, she presented here just a while ago, that um, there are stages we go through, including depression. The other one was what? Anger. When you have lost in life, this year below, this life you must lose and you must feel it. The affliction, the challenges you face because of having lost a, a close relative. 
especially ladies, they never forget that soon. Uh, 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 so devastating. Discouragement all around you and you don't seem to see that there is a future in store for you. God has promised that in the midst of all those difficulties and our way of life, it's become a way of life. He is coming soon. And when he comes, he has a grand duty and responsibility to take us home. And that's the very reason why you're seated here today. If you are seated here for another reason, that you don't want to be in friendship with this man called Jesus, the man of the cross, the man who did it all for you, then I don't know how and when you will be convinced to know the reason for you to have been in fellowships like this. Yes, there are challenges, but Jesus has taken it all and he has said everything is secure. As you thrive in church life, new life, church life, specifically, I want to address today. There are complications that the evil one brings along as we fellowship as a church. Situations come our way that we normally do not understand. Conflicts come our way even in church. Sometimes you don't feel like forgiving someone out there who must have done something significant that you have not forgotten till today. And you, you are out there seated, burdens are lifted on Calvary. You are the very one Jesus is trying to intimate his thought to you that he has taken it all for you. You feel like some guy out there has messed up with you in your very pertinent and intimate relationship which you had anticipated to materialize into a marriage relationship. Okay. And you have been frustrated. And you feel like you are a nobody out there. Burdens are lifted on Calvary. Jesus is very near. That reconnection is what we are longing for in our respective troubles and challenges. And God has said it very clear and loudly that he is very near with the troubles that have encompassed, encompassed you. And there are diverse sorts of those problems which you may not even explain. Sometimes people, some people are depressed. They don't understand who they are because they don't know the problem they have. Take it to the Lord in prayer. He'll take it up and he'll, he'll bring healing and consolation specifically designed for your temperament. Not for anybody else. So, this is the faith of the, a church member who is longing to be reconnected back to the true altar of fellowship. We'll continue with the program in the afternoon. Now I'm doing something that God impressed on my heart. But I need to come back now and again and tell you that these 10 weeks of prayer, it is back to the altar. Back to the altar wherein we can find solace and consolation. Back to him who has taken it all on your behalf. While you are thriving here, and moving very well and uh, doing everything smoothly. Programs are running well. And you are, you, you, you are systematic in, in the way you do things. God is in need and is desirous of you of one thing. You know, there are many things around that can disorient you and disrupt you from who you ought to be at fellowship. And we need to remind each other. There are two ladies who capture my uh, attention, uh, Mother and Mary. One of them decided to tarry with Jesus because of the magnitude 
of her sinfulness and the way she had given up and lost hope completely. And she, 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 she stumbled across. She, she came around. When she was moving along in that kind of a life experience, she, it, it so happened that he came and met, uh, you know, God is a God of miracles. Even when you are not in, intentional, he can work up with you because he loves you. Hallelujah. So this woman was in her waywardness and she, she was caught with those men, those guys, some of them who had started this business of adultery with her. Without shame and commitment, they were committed to bring that lady before Jesus. And they, 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 brought, they, brought, they, they brought her before her and said, man, they wanted to test him to know how he makes decisions, whether those decisions are according to the law of the Pharisees and the Jewish culture. So they brought her. The law said, whoever is caught in what? An adultery must be done what? Stoned to death. And uh, uh, these guys came, I will say they came blindly because they never uh, stumbled upon this man called Jesus who was the really altar of transformation. And so they, they, they just bypassed the circumstances of falling uh, in love with him. And uh, they, 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 they took it up as a responsibility to pursue a woman who had issues with her life. <laughs> you know, do not poke nose, do not poke your nose into other people's issues. Especially in Nairobi, it's dangerous. It's my way, it's my life. It's my way, it's my love. In as much as that is true, when it comes to principles that guide you for an, a life that you are, you have been given an opportunity to sit here to seek the Lord wants someone out there like me to poke my nose to your life. <laughs> like out there when you want some, you see someone there is having some trouble, some problem, some challenges, reach uh, your hand out in love and tell her Jesus loves you. And this woman, she came trembling and tremblingly she fell down knowing very well that Jesus had one thing to do to eliminate him from existence. That was our ultimate desire because she had been caught in that act and the law said you are supposed to be stoned to death. I want to imagine this is Jesus and this is the woman and, this, and you are the guys who are spectating on what is going to happen next. And uh, Jesus turns to this man whom he knew at heart. Their communion with him was disconnected. There was no real connection. And so that's why they were so condemning. And they said, whoever has not done anything close to this, although there were some who had done even beyond. Chief of sinners, though I be, Jesus Christ died for me. Died at Calvary. Ah, The by I am his heart, he is mine. You never know when God is going to sing a song for you of that nature. Just as this woman never knew, she came trembling and awaiting for her ultimate, according to the law. You know, there are some ultimates in life that you have no option to change, isn't it? No, some ultimate in life that you have no option to change. You made a mistake somewhere, made a wrong choice, you need to stay with that woman. You need to stay with that man 
until death does you a son. Some choices you make. Young people, make proper choices. And these proper choices are not out of how, how much you are learned in the university education and the philosophy, but how much you have fell, fallen down at the feet and how much Jesus has connected with you so that he can show you what to do and who to marry. Well, this woman, Jesus had and said, whoever has never done a sin before, please be the first one to do what? To throw a stone. Did he ever see anyone throwing a stone? Because of his power, because of his introspective eyes, eyes that can see what no human being can see, utterances which can utter words that no human psychology and convictions and education and philosophy of learning can confront against. The utterance went right into the eyes, hearts of the men who were against and who had been persistent for a long time, not wanting to meet at the altar with Jesus. And so they all fled away. They all disappeared from that scene. And what was going on there, even the woman could not understand. She even did not know that they had fled. She, because she was bowed down, waiting for the first stone, the second one, because she has no air out. And Jesus, was, who was looking at the both uh, group parties, realized that the men have disappeared and said, Woman, I have nothing against you. Go and your sin are forgiven. That is how buttons are lifted. That's how when you connect with your Savior and Master, Jesus Christ, that is how much consolation you share and the joy we share. As we do what? As we tarry there with him. No one knows. It's an individual challenge, an individual responsibility. And uh, it went along. This woman came at some specific time, bringing thanksgiving prayer and supplication before Jesus in the house of Simon. You remember that? I want to lead you into the, 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 a communion fellowship on how God deals with us. We are no, God is no respecter of persons. And he does not uh, distinguish a great sinner and, uh, and the chief of sinners. And uh, he, he, he treats us equally as long as you respond and say, here I am, I want to connect with you. At the house of Simon, there was a feast arranged by these blinded men like Simon and the others and Judas and that stuff. You know, you can be too close to the pastor, but yet you are still blinded and you don't know anything. You, it's only the tie I'm putting and being close to the pastor, but I see nothing. And I've not been connected to where I should be connected even beyond the pastor. And those are the guys pastor, who, give, who, 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 who give pastors headache because they are learned they are educated. They think issues of salvation relates to education. Uh, relate to... No. Even this young girl here can speak something to me and to you, if you are humble enough. Praise God. Okay. Those guys went there and prepared an extravagant visit, visit, feast. This woman said, let it be. I will go even to those guys who initiated me into this business that I was almost deaf. She had sensed and said, God, you have saved me, my life. There is nothing between. Hallelujah. <laughs> nothing between me and my Savior because I know what he has done to my life. Nothing between. So when you sing a song, don't sing, sing by opening your mouth, lips are closed and open. No. Sing with understanding. Sing with understanding. All our young, Singing with understanding of what you are singing. This woman said, nothing between my, 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 who? my soul and my individual commitment. So she, she strictly tiptoed towards where these men had arranged 
an extraordinary feast for Jesus. There is a song which says, I have come to you empty handed. Isn't it? Nothing I bring. Isn't it? I, I know how to do it in my language because that's what I've been used to. But I, I, I'm getting adjusted. So allow me. <laughs> when I don't sing it in English, nothing I bring. I'm empty handed. Isn't it? La la la. Da la la la. Da la la. La 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 la. La la la. La 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 la. La la la. La, la, la. I am blind and nobody I come that you may open me up my eyes to see the realms on how to do ministry the realms on how to engage with others in a fellowship such as this that we can together be involved for a cause of destiny because we are being prepared for his coming so this woman came alone and uh, even those guys were grumbling and she came with a, 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 an anointing oil that was so precious, so expensive, she fell at the feet of Jesus. With supplication and thanksgiving and a testimony. That's the, Pastor, that's the greatest testimony that was born on earth for Jesus to have initiated someone to the fullness of joy that was no, never comparable, ever. Okay. They started grumbling still. The unconverted will still be there. <laughs> I have a bridge here. Until you personally sing that song, I come to the garden alone. Your leadership as an elder is no business. The God is no respecter of elders and pastors, leaders of the union, leaders of the general conference. He only wants to hear you speak with your heart, intimately with him. I come to the garden alone. And the joy I anticipate to find over there has no comparison. Hallelujah. Has no comparison. That is what faith ensures within a man and a woman of God who has decided to follow Jesus. So the, the chairman was complaining. This woman who was coming here, I was the one who, who initiated her to this business. Oh, uh, he may ashamed, she may ashamed me away, call it quit with these women. And uh, the Judas was saying, oh, okay, this amount of money, which has been uselessly wasted by pouring on the feet of this man of Galilee who always walks in the dusty streets of Galilee, Filled with that washing with an expensive oil. Ah, this woman was content and she was only satisfied to express her appreciation, thanksgiving prayer, thanksgiving offering for what the Lord has done. When you have sensed what the Lord has done, no one can alienate you from the connection you have found. A new faith, a new lifestyle. It will be a forever commitment back to the halter. Okay. These are the guys who could not understand the message of salvation. Come with me, the book of uh, the book of Ro, Ro, John, 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 John the Gospel, chapter eight, verse thirty-two. The Bible says, "You members, you and myself." God's intention is that we get to know the truth and the truth has the power and the ability to set us free. Jesus was trying to respond to the Pharisees, men who were so committed, committed to mission, men who knew how to study the scriptures, and they were well versed in scripture. And so he addressed them. Thou shalt know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Communion time. And this guy say, came complaining and said, verse 33, you read downwards, I'm paraphrasing. He said, they said, okay, what freedom do you want us to expose? 
What nature of a freedom you are preaching to us? We are okay. We are doing fine. Out there, we are well placed in a in a in in, in, in where it means to be job security. You know, sometimes people who are well secured in terms of job, job security, they do not know that there are those who are languishing who are seeking for job. You may never want even to hear about them. God forbid you are one of these guys who never wanted to hear about the truth which transforms. Okay, okay. We, we belong to Abraham. Our ancestry is a chosen one. We are the choicest of all vines that ever exists and we are God's people. Advent people, I'm a Sabbath. I come on Sabbath every day. I give tithe on that stuff. I do all the A, B, C, D. I'm okay. I want to pray that you be startled a little bit. You be uh, provoked a little bit. Uh, it's not how much you are connected with activities and uh, what you must do and what you must not do. Of course, Jesus will guide you in reality what you must not do. But there, that superficial kind of life that we are always connected to our church. Whenever we are, pro, whenever we are rebuked, we say, it's okay with us. It's new life. What new life in this world that is devastated by sin and destruction? We have a new home where we are going. What new life you are trying to propagate here? God forbid. New life, most new life judges, they are all over. It's like a culture. People come there because there are no standards. The people don't ask them questions. God must ask you a very personal question. If you are right with him or not, he must ask you in worship. He must. That is mandate, not a human being. So these guys were saying, okay, we belong to Abraham. Our ancestry is a true one. Adventists, we keep Sabbath. No other church that keeps Sabbath out there. So we belong. We have a belonging of Sabbath keeping. Even that Sabbath keeping, this morning, you woke up and uh, and uh, and came late to church. <laughs> you know why. But you are a Sabbath keeper, isn't it? This is a challenge. Come late. Just a while ago, the chairs over there were empty, but gradually as we were waiting for the service to carry on, people were filled. Sabbath is a day that God has a sign that we begin with him. Sabbath school program. Carry on for our nourishment. It's not specifically for a program thing like Sabbath school. It's meant for a testimony time to hear what God has done and what he can even do to the remaining portion of your life. Sabbath school and sermon time. We don't have to be like those old days when I used to attend church and, uh, and, uh, and uh, I used to go there at the second mass. <laughs> It's mine for the asking. No. Church, Sabbath school, is part of the entire program of the day. These guys were complaining and Jesus told them in verse 34. Somebody read. Jesus told them something. Told them. What did he tell them? I want you to read. Help me, assist me read. Okay, let me read. And Jesus answered to them, Most assuredly, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. The freedom that is intended for a son, a daughter of God, is the freedom of back to the altar. Where God can 
associate with you because he knows your heart is desiring to connect with him. Not an emulation of freedom. Not a propagated freedom in terms of the status quo, in terms of your dignity, in terms of your age. One young girl, she used to feel too good of herself. You know, most young people feel too good. They forget that they one day get old as I do. See, I'm old. <laughs> and even young men. That one young guy, you know, uh, there was something I feared most in my life. Let me, let me just tell you before I continue. I used to fear God whenever I went to funerals of, uh, in the primary school. We, there are some songs that we were singing that evoked my emotions. And I felt like death is a the devastating thing. And I was asking my, and I was always praying and wishing. If wishes were ours, then we could, that I'm right, but anyway, God has blessed my wishes. I want to pray. I used to pray, God, if these young girls, primary school, young boys, primary school, are dying before they get married, Lord, help me not to die before I get married. <laughs> I think that's the prayer of most young people over here. You don't pray for them, they get proper relationships, they will hate you next to hell because they are anxious and desirous to get someone who will make them feel cool. When walking in town in a, some retreat, you feel cool. That coolness is not the reality of the coolness you are supposed to feel because Jesus is coming and in heaven there will be no marriage. Oh, okay. I'm not saying people don't get married, but don't put it as if it is the most probable thing that is priority for you. Serve Jesus and let him find you looking for a partner when you are committed to him, connecting back to the altar. I love young people. They are so vibrant, filled with life. Just the other day, my dear young people, we were celebrating the departure of our colleagues. I hope they belong to this church. Um, it was called uh, the other day on Thursday. He was celebrating some guys who went for mission. They perished at the battlefront of mission. And so you felt like we need to bid them farewell. Just this African culture is bid them farewell. And some of you even accompanied those guys home who, are the, who, are, who, are, who, are, who passed away. Why are you an exception? Why are you an exception? Th that's a question you should ask yourself. You have a reason why you live. They finish their stuff and their business. And that's why they slept. It's not by accident. God foresaw that maybe their life doesn't have to exceed where he has allowed them to serve the Lord. Committed. Compare your life with those guys who served and they perished in that misfortune. With you who is careless not involved even matters of church. Careless. You sit at the back. Walk away when it's time. You are, most, you are the most miserable person ever. And God is calling you, come back to the altar. That we may fellowship with him. He is the meaning of our life and existence. All right. Uh, I want to say that the Pharisees were as ardent as most people are, right, are today in church. Pastor speaking something, complaining. Did you know that a pastor has been assigned, an elder has been assigned, there's some elders who wait until the year is ended before they become involved. Simply because they think they are superior. What superiors do you have? When I have all ever witnessed here in New Life, I've never been, no, no, here in Nairobi Central Church, that's where I, my, my office is, I've witnessed great people even more than you. You are useless. There are great people who have gone past that way. In fact, the, if they are not compared to you, then, I mean, I, I mean, we never know how great a person is, but to me, when I look at the, 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 the congregation who come there, there are great people accompanying that corpse. Isn't it? 
and they have always been sent back home to rest, awaiting the resurrection morning. Who are you? Humble yourself at the feet of Jesus. Connect with him. That's the meaning of your life here. That's what, that's, that's, that was the confrontation Jesus was facing with the Pharisees. They are propagating their ideologies, their points of convergence and understanding, but the point Jesus wanted to communicate that if you are a sinner and you have never known where to find solace and comfort at the foot of the cross, which they did not understand anyway, until Judas, what happened to him? You know that story. There is a man here I want to share with you. I don't know how things come, but uh, I want to thank God for, uh, for the reading of this. In the book of Zechariah, the book of Zechariah, chapter, uh, chapter, chapter 12, I want to take you to the main thought as I just prepare to, all right, one thing is needful. All right, it's over there. Mm. And the book of uh, Zechariah, chapter, chapter 12, verse 10. Mourning for the pierced one. This is a prophecy that is written for our understanding. It was written by Zechariah as God revealed it to him. So that it can be a lesson for us who live in this day to know that the plan of God and our salvation was not an afterthought. It was a plan that was taught by God before the foundation of what? Of the world. The Bible reads, And I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication Listen, I will, I have the power to insinuate them, to influence them with my spirit. You know, when the spirit of God descended, the people started speaking language as never had before. And so the, their commitment was to, what, was to what they listened God give them to speak. So this is the prophecy here that mourning for the pierced one. And I will pour my spirit on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication. You know, there are people who keep on singing of grace. Grace, such a sinner like me. But you keep on singing day in, day out. Grace is not uh, an environment you swim in without connecting with God, who has provided the same grace to you. God forbid, come back to the halt. Grace, such a sinner like me. You go out that door out there, I confessed. <laughs> Just the other day, I told you uh, a situation which I found myself in. One day, when I was as young as seven, somewhere, seven, seven, eight years, I don't know how old I was then, I was young. I used to follow my mother to Ecclesia. Ecclesia. Yeah, you know that place where they go on Sunday, isn't it? Uh, for mass, isn't it? I was once an uh, ardent uh, Catholic and I had been already been, whatever that they say, it has already been done to, on me. And uh, my project, a brand bracked out of the fire. And my mother, while with my mother who carried goods to sell in the marketplace, because Sunday happened to be a day in my local village where you also come from when the marketplace is held, isn't it? And so we carry some goods. And some of you must have had that experience. And now that you are here, you know about Sabbath alone. And uh, we used to put our goods at the entrance of the church where they were taken care of well. And so after mass, we go and uh, celebrate, uh, I mean, sell the goods. It happened several times in my hearing and in my sight. A, an only lady used to come every day and say, I blacked someone's bumpkin before 
the priest. I blacked someone in pumpkin. And I want, I was desirous to know, anxiously desirous to know from my mother what that meant. And so my mother told me, hey, keep quiet, that's a witchcraft. <laughs> she always comes to seek for penance, repentance, isn't it? Let me tell you, that is the nature of man. Not only in that church, but even here, we can find some people who come here, when they sing well, they think that is a service they have rendered to God, and they go back in their old ways, connect to the altar. Be connected to the altar. That's the only safety for you. Or else your dressing is not an void. Or else your hair, hair makeup is shaking like this, it's nothing before God. <laughs> you know, sometimes I wonder. You know, you think when you shake it like this, you are, you are not threatening God. You are a creature. He is the creator. You are not, God is not a respecter of persons. Even me. As long as I'm a human being. White or black. Indian or what? Some people here, you fear white people like they are from heaven. No. <laughs> they are here below until Jesus comes. One as if he were. We praise God. Yes. So... I came to learn that really, without a proper connection, we may be making mistakes of misunderstanding grace. So as we thrive in this life of grace, as we move in this provision that is free, and you ask for the asking. You know, there was a song when I was young, I used to hear, I don't fret my choker, it, it is you ask for the asking. You ask any song, it is played for you. Church is not like that. Church is not for what you want. It happened to your want it done in your life. Church is what God wants you to do because of the provision of grace he has given free and fair to everyone. Now, the reading goes, I want to go very quickly. I don't know, but uh, I was given free air time uh, and I know how to finish it. Uh, uh, he says, yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son. The inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication, when it's poured upon them, they will be able to mourn as a child mourns as a mother mourns for his only son do you know how serious an african upholds a baby boy that is serious from where i come from it's now that we are learning and we are getting content i have three girls and one boy people have told me continue i, I said no <laughs> a child is a child praise god <laughs> i don't have to continue because i want a boy now, when the Bible says, as a woman mourns, the Bible is an African stuff, isn't it? <laughs> as a child, a mother mourns for his only boy, child. You know, a boy was adored in the community, especially African, because he is the unexpected person to inherit all that you leave behind. And I don't know how this inheritance thing is so captivating, that once you think you, someone is going to inherit, you perceive as if he's going to inherit and live on your behalf forever. <laughs> you know, I'm not understanding. This is also what the lesson was warning. Sometimes even our departed ones, we want to live with them in memory. My memory will never let you go, my mother. I will live to remember you. Foolishness. You are grieving. May God help you and lift you from that burden. Because there's no connection between the people who have gone before us and those who are living. Their memory is gone. So your memories are fantasy. It's a fantasy. Those are feelings that are deceiving you and there's no worship in such a feelings. Baby boy, the spirit of God will be poured upon Israel, his people, a generation, generation, and they will mourn as though a woman was mourning for his only son. Let me ask you a question. 
It's yours for it's your choice. You can make a choice up there. Between your husband and your only son, whom, ladies, whom do you feel like mourning more than the other? I'm listening. I'm listening. You laughter, your laughter, I'm listening. Listen to me. Listen to me. Connected. Are you connected? So, which one? Which one can you forget easily? <laughs> yeah, there are those who may not forget the ones they were not born with who has given them children. But let me tell you, statistics say that women losing a child of her womb, this one, there, is no, there was never a time the husband was begotten of a womb of your wife. There was no more time. One time. And so there's no connection. It's only... Nivira <laughs> 2. Jesus is coming soon. Praise God. <laughs> Patterns are lifted at Calvary. Let me tell you this, friends, that the connection between a son and a mother, a son of our own womb, is so intimate and so connected that you feel like you are worn down. You are finished. Holding like that? You don't even forget. Remember your husband. What do you have to do with husband? He did his stuff. And uh, he finished his work. His assignment is done. The one who's closer to him. Is that one you are holding in your laps? That is how much serious God is saying that until something peculiar happens, until the whole spirit is released and accepted of his church, there is no way they will mourn for their sins. But he, he, the prophecy was saying, I will create that mourning in you. And uh, you, because of mourning, let me ask you a question. Suppose a lady is mourning for her husband. One of them was saying, every time I wake up at night, I see my really husband. <laughs> in the really act. That is demonic. Many of you see, uh, God forbid, you need to be prayed for. You need to be delivered. From that suspended emotional stress, which is disconnect, acting a disconnection between you and your God. God forbid. I love you, Daddy. I'll never forget you. Your memories will never go. There are some who mean it, and there are those who don't mean what they say. They are simply saying that before their colleagues from the University of Nairobi. And so when it's done, they forget about their dad. But a woman, it will linger a little bit longer. A son. Okay. When the spirit comes, he can only transform our commitment of worship and fellowship to this kind of an experience. When it will be nothing we are thinking about, dreaming about, except our relationship with our Savior who has paid it all on Calvary Street. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin as crimson stain, he was did white as. Guys out there who have the pain of mourning, like as a lady mourning for her only son, her only hope will have to put that song in their lips coming out with a meditation sort of experience and calling into mind how they are far they have wandered away from God and how they long for that restoration back to the altar. That is the longing that the Spirit of God can instigate in your heart, can embrace upon your heart. And that's the feeling, that's the, the principal feeling of how the Lord communicates this serious message of back to the altar. In that day, there shall be a great morning in Jerusalem, like the morning at Adad Rimon in the plain of Megiddo, and the land shall mourn every family 
by itself. The family of the house of David by itself. And their wives by the, themselves. The family of the house of Nathan by itself. And their wives by themselves. The family of the house of Levi by itself. And their wives by themselves. The family of Shimei by itself. And the family of that remain. Every family by itself. And their wives by themselves. You know there are some women here. I wonder. It's like your husbands are carrying faith for you. Because you simply arrived. And it was paid. Dowry. Whether paid or not anyway. You are Sakiwa. Isn't it? And you have no sense of uh, uh, feeling like you may go. Chapo asbui na pikangwa. Chioni kilo na chotaka, you ask for the asking. God forbid. It won't be too long. Jesus is coming. Life is not about chapo and the security you have. It is everyone should do the morning. Each wife, every family member, you need to introspect your life, experience, and call and see how much you are involved in this endeavor of faith and calling. Okay, let me do something as I transit to the conclusive remarks. Uh, okay, and uh, in that day, uh, yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his own son. In that day, there shall be a great morning in Jerusalem. Okay, it's in, uh, like the morning at Be Adan Rimon in the plain of Megiddo. Did you know what happened at the plain of Megiddo that is being um, um, reiterated here? That is being repeated here as a message of hope? It is the place where King Josiah died while at war with Egypt. Megiddo was a plain where there was an entry to Mesopotamia. Whoever wanted to attack the people who lived in that place, the Israelites, that was the entry, the easiest entry. And so the Israelites knew they went to defend themselves at the plain of Megiddo. At this plain, the Egyptians came and the king who was in the throne of Israel was King Josiah. A king who had brought transformation. A king who was connected with God. He brought a revival and reformation in Israel. He went out to defend God's people whom he had been assigned to, to defend and secure as a king. So he was killed. Israel mourned for many days for this man of God. Israel was challenged to think as you even think the usefulness of your husband. When she dies, she was such a good man, such a loving, and that's what they say, such a loving man. I never see a man who can substitute. No, 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 it's because she's gone. That's why you're saying what you're saying. Can, have you ever said it? For those who have their husbands alive, have you ever said it while she's in her hearing that you are the only one, the odd one out of all the ones I have, uh, I have ever, mm, okay. Uh, have you ever said it? Rarely do you say it, but you pretend here and say during funerals, I remember, I've not, my tears are dried. That is deception. They are dried. I can't see an, a substitute, but I ask God, you break into tears as a sign of your connection with him. <laughs> God forbid. The connection the Israelites had to King Josiah was a reformation of true godliness that amazed the entire Israelite kings. Because it, has, it never happened. It happened so intricately and so, so seriously because Josiah called for the book and he guided the people to live as by dictates of the book. Reformation came as a result of people going back to the book. And God blessed Israel. But do you know, 
he allowed the king to die at the plain of Megiddo simply because it was his will. Uh, brethren, turn to me to the book of, uh, of, uh, of Luke chapter 23, verse 20, verse 20, 46 and 47. Turn with me as I do my concluding remarks. Turn with me the book of uh, one more, one more, uh, one more. I remember one more, yeah, one more, two, two. That is the second last. Mm. Yes. Today, I have not been here. I'm, 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 I'm conversating. <laughs> no, I don't have to do it too much, okay? Praise God. Read, read, read for me that one. Um, Luke chapter 23, our key verse, our key verse. 23 verse 46. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up his ghost. Verse 47. That is the time when Jesus breath is last on the cross because of the burdens that he lifted. Now, when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God saying, certainly this was a righteous man. Looking at the cross, reading about Jesus and how the passion story on how Jesus, how Jesus suffered. A man of God who longs to be connected back to the altar of worship and true communion with God will say this, certainly this is a righteous man. I have no time to tell you how men and women who are not chosen of God confessed Jesus in their hearts. The story of Matthew chapter 8 talks about a centurion. A guy who led a hundred Italian battalion. His child was sick and he came and said come and heal before Jesus. Come and do healing. Jesus said I will, I will come. And he said, in faith, you don't need to struggle and trouble yourself. Simply say a word and it will be done. Hallelujah. The word is powerful. So he believed in Jesus that his word could exhibit some difference in the life of his child. And so his faith worked for him and was accounted on him as righteousness and the child was healed. Time will not allow me to tell you a story of the centurion who received a vision at night at three o'clock. A centurion. That is a centurion. That is a centurion. This is a centurion. Go in your Bible study. Study about the centurion. And it will make you cease be bragging around that you are an Adventist. Until you are connected is when you can join up with the experience of the centurion that you are a true worshiper. The man called Cornelius in the book of Acts chapter 10. He was a true worshiper. He gave offerings, free will offerings. Some of you don't give. Of course, offerings will not be, uh, lead you to be accepted of God. But when you give back that which belongs to God, is an appreciation of what the Lord has done to you. Having met with him and with an experience of what significance he is in your life. It will happen. You have to give. There are some people who say they are church elders. They are church members sit at the back there. But you have never participated in giving. God forbid. The centurion gave. And when Peter was led to him. This, this man in the book of uh, Cornelius, Cornelius. Who was led to him? Who was, who was led to Cornelius? who was sent to Cornelius. Peter was sent to Cornelius to guide him in the way. He was a true worshiper, but he had not caught the full light. But God had accepted him as his son, as his daughter. He was connected to the altar of worship. And for that reason, it's only, it's only needed a, 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 to connect a small missing link. By the way, as I finish, the missing link between you and an unbeliever how do you estimate it? Go on estimating. Some of you here go fellowship with 
worldly friends, you are here, they are better, they are better off than you because you never know how they converse in the whole in the secret place place chambers of their communion with God. But you, because you are Adventist, you are bragging here, you are saying, I'm Adventist, mine is Sakiwa. Jesus said, it is finished for each one of us. And he calls us to individually delve into the habits, morning and evening. Workplace, Sakiwa time. Find time, not to but to meditate on how much you are connected in the, with the challenges of the workplace. May God bless us. But as we connect with him, it is the lifeline of our existence and our salvation. It's my prayer in Jesus' name.